We completed a world record in Melbourne, so it's nice to kind of demonstrate what students at uni can actually do, like break world records with the vehicles we're making. Oh, oh well, <laughs> you should be in marketing. <laughs> One of the most exciting fields in renewable energy is now the development of electric vehicles. But today, we're not talking about Teslas or BYDs, but we're talking about our own Aussie homegrown EVs. I had the pleasure of interviewing an amazing young engineer working with a team on the World Solar Car Challenge for UNSW. So here is Anna Matthew from the Swift Racing Team, and I love her passion and knowledge. She had an answer for everything. If we kind of have a look at this car, it actually looks very comfortable. While normally the solar challenge cars, you kind of lie half backwards with your <laughs> knee under your chin and you can't be more than 12 kilos. Yeah, so we compete in a different class to all of the other ones that we're seeing here today. We compete in the cruiser challenge. So those cars have to be able to fit four people in and sort of is designed to be more like a commercial car. For the race, we have to have a minimum of four people. So you have to have four people in and they have to all be 80 kilos. So if I'm 81 or 79, I can't join the team? No, so what we do is we put weight on our drivers. A driver selection process, obviously, you have to be a certain height so you fit in the car, a certain weight so they can pack weight onto you. So they usually go with people who are lighter than that threshold and then just pack weight on them, right. like okay. in essence. So this is much more comfortable. Mm. And, and where do you drive around? So we do most of our testing at Sydney Motorsports Park. They're one of our partners. We do all of our track days and testing down there. We completed a world record in Melbourne. Our battery has a 38 kilowatt hour capacity. We did a thousand kilometers on a single charge by an electric vehicle. It got a thousand kilometers in under 12 hours. If we weren't trying to like push that limit, you can get 1300 kilometers out of a single charge of this battery. And, and what did you get? 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars? What was the price? Uh, Guinness World Record. A previous car has a world record so it's nice to kind of demonstrate what this technology and what students at uni can actually do, like break world records with the vehicles we're making. Oh, oh well, <laughs> you should be in marketing. And, and what, what cells you got on there? Um, so these are half cut, they're just regular monocrystalline. They so is it taken out of a panel or is that no. stick on a module? So they, are, they were designed for this car. We partnered with a company in Italy for them. So this was around when kind of COVID and lockdowns were happening. So we did have to do a lot of um, have the manufacturer basically build the panels for us, but the student team designed it themselves. They designed the solar arrays for wherever they were putting them on the car and the company made them. And we got these solar panels that now we have a recess in the body panels. We silicon them in. They are designed specifically for this car. So this car never gets plugged into a wall. It always gets fully charged by the... So no, there is a battery that sits in the back. We don't have it here today. It does get charged. So we have... A... So the solar is really only a top up, is it? It's a top up. That's what it's designed to and, do. And yeah. it'll make it look all sexy. Like yeah, it's a, it's, it looks good and it looks like, and you do get 26 kilometers out of these solar panels. They generate 1.2 kilowatts of power. So for your average kind of daily drive around the city, driving to work, that's enough. 26 got kilometers. Got it, got it. But for most people, they would have actually thought that mm -hmm. all these solar panel bits here <laughs> would power the car fully. In but time. when you drove your 1,000 Ks, you really had to plug it into the wall socket so, yeah, somewhere. When we drive it, we do plug it in. So the battery gets charged fully and that 38 kilowatt hours is from charging it. What the solar is designed to do is basically it extends the range that we get. So when we'll be doing the BWSC, we'll be figuring out when the solar panels are going to be giving us that extra Reduce and then we can push the car further to kind of get quicker between those checkpoints. We can meet each one faster and we can conserve battery power at the same time because the solar is doing more of the work at that point. And do you drive it? Oh, I want to. I want to. Um, I've only been on the team for about six months now and we've had a couple of track days, but it's mostly been holidays for that time. But I've applied. I've applied to drive at the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge, but apparently it's really, really hot in the car. As long as I can kind of survive the high temperatures and apparently it's a little bit like driving a go-kart sometimes with it's so light that you get blown around by the wind a lot right. but it'd be so cool to be able to and UNSW, aren't you got that photovoltaic department that has invented a couple of world records too? Yeah, so Martin Green is like one of the godfathers of solar. I'm actually part of that school. It's 
so cool to be able to, because we at UNSW have all these facilities to be able to kind of work with our solar panels at uni. So we're doing a lot of testing of our solar panels ourselves in those facilities. I, I know that there are quite a few inventions that all come out of that university, mm. including I think the P-type solar panel, mm. that technology, but somehow it all got sold to China. We don't have very many um, manufacturers of solar cells in Australia. So at UNSW, we've basically got a pilot line manufacturing facility and it takes a while to be able to manufacture cells even from there. It's not designed to kind of produce in a commercial sense. And that's where I guess China has those facilities and has those resources. And it is a lot easier to get cells made there. Would you be surprised if I tell you BP Solar used to make uh, solar panels in, in Australia? In Australia, yeah. I would be, yeah. yeah. And at one stage, it was the largest factory in the Southern Hemisphere. Mm. And Telstra was the largest installer of solar in the world. It makes sense that Australia would have a lot to do with RE, but I guess, yeah, the lack of focus on it recently. I would say. Do you think because of the governments we had? There's a bit to do with government, but yeah, with all the renewable technologies, China's the world leader in offshore wind. It's it's a world leader in a lot of technologies and renewables because it has a government that will like put money into it because it wants to be a world leader in it. So like, how does that make you feel? I mean, why did you go into renewable in the first place as a young person? I am good at maths and I care about the environment and I want to make a difference with the fact that I can do maths. I, I couldn't enjoy anything more, like the degree itself, but working like a high performance application of what I'm learning as well in Sunswift has just been a dream. What about as a female engineer to wipe the floor with some of the boys engineer? How's that feeling? Oh, it feels great. Like you look at the leadership team on Sunswift at least and the proportion of women on the team is growing but there's still only something like 15 out of the 90 um, people on the team. But um, you see the leadership team and you'd think that there's much higher proportion of women on the team because they are... They do the work? They, they, are, the, they are the faces of the like our team manager Cherie and our previous team manager like our previous team managers have all been strong women in engineering we have all about like so many department leads so many people in leadership positions in the team are women I think it kind of shows you I mean you have to be pretty passionate to apply kind of like I wasn't too convinced by like I'm not much of a car person I'm being so kind of turned into a car person now but if you've applied to the team as a woman you're kind of doing it with like I'm really passionate about this and I think it kind of shows by like the amount of work that we do on the team as well. well I think you showed it today. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. Every hurdle, every question, and I just went over it and conquered it, and in such style and enthusiasm. I'm sure she can talk underwater. Very impressive. If this is the caliber of young female engineers in Australia, then our engineering future in renewables really looks bright. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, Please support us by subscribing, liking it, dropping a comment, whatever. Let us know if there's anything you would like us to do to improve the shows and for future episodes. So, stay charged, stay cool. See you in the next one. Want more Energy Answered? Visit yourenergyanswers.com for quality energy products, tools and calculators, and find your quality local installers. Please support the channel by liking the video, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell and check out all our other videos. You're still here? I'll see you next time. Bye.